Hello and welcome to On the Sofa for another episode. I'm Manya and joining me tonight is Anna. I see we've got quite a few people already with us. So hello to Jean and Barbara. And we've got Leanne, um, Thelma and Roger are some of our regulars. It's lovely to see you back again. So as you'll know by now, we do love our clan stories. And we've got a whole section on the website dedicated to around 200 Scottish clans, along with many blogs, photos and features. So there are over 500 clan and family associations registered around the world. And we love learning new bits of history and learning from our customers how they explored their heritage and trace their roots. We are certainly not experts. We are just keen to share the information. But we do love digging into the often bloody and brutal stories. It's one of my favourite parts, uh, which we'll see more of tonight. Um, we like to highlight the lesser known bits of Scottish clan history and the work of the clan societies around the world. So don't hesitate to chip in if we've got anything wrong or if you've got any stories to add, we'd love to hear it. So Mackay is actually our clan of the month for February. So every month we choose a clan and celebrate their history, their castles, famous faces, and do an interview or two with interesting people from the clan or society. And we always welcome your input. So if it's your clan's turn, or even if it's not, um, and you've got stories to share, then please let us know. So it's so intriguing, as Monia said, just to hear the journey of Scots who've gone overseas and how they ended up there, and along with how you can continue to celebrate your heritage in lots of different ways. So where did Clan Mackay originate? The name Mackay is derived from the Gaelic for son of Hugh or son of fire, but it's actually unknown who the original Hugh was. It's thought that he was likely a member of the ancient Celtic royal house and was caught up in a dispute for the throne in the 12th and 13th centuries. Um, so there are two common origin stories for the clan. The first one was by Sir Robert Gordon, who was a 17th century historian. And the second was by Alexander Mackay of Blackcastle, who was an 18th, 19th century historian. So Gordon's account claims that the originators of Clan Mackay shared a common ancestor with the chief, chiefs of Clan Forbes and Clan Farquharson. However, Angus Mackay disputes this instead giving evidence to show that the connection between Forbes and the Mackays was actually down to close allegiance between the two families rather than a family bond. The allegiance began during the 16th century when both families were embroiled in a feud with Clan Gordon. Alexander Mackay's Black Castle manu manuscript determined that the chiefs of the Mackay clan were related to the Farquharsons, but through a different lineage to that which was stated in the 17th century by Gordon. So that account explains that I Mackay, very good name, uh, the first chief of Clan Mackay, chief of Clan Mackay, sorry, was a descendant of Malcolm Macheth, who is the Earl of Ross. So Macheth died in 1168, and I Mackay was born around 40 years later in 1210. So the story goes that Macheth and his supporters fled from Moray to Strathnaver um, after a conflict with King Malcolm IV of Scotland. So in 1215, Kenneth Macheth, who was the grandson of Malcolm, was killed in battle whilst fighting against the king. It's said that the Mackays of Strathnaver were, uh, are descended from this Kenneth Macheth and I Mackay, some very good names, uh, and that I Mackay may well have been his son or his nephew. So the son of I Mackay married the daughter of the Bishop of Caithness and the Mackays were gifted lands at Durness. From here they accumulated further land in Far, Tongue, Durness and Edricillis in the far northwest uh, county of Sunderland. So Emily has a beautiful photo there of Durness and it is well worth a visit. I mean, I think that photo would sell just for anyone. Looks like you're abroad. So, um, Monia mentioned Strathnaver Museum, and just while we're talking about that side of the country, if you're in um, across there on, in the north, 
um, you can visit Strathnavour Museum and there's all the story about the Mackays but also about the Highland Quincy's and the and the stories of the clans so not just only about Mackay and um, but really interesting place to visit and they have just received some extra funding to do up the museum so um, keep an eye on it because I think there'll be even more developments there and it's going to look pretty fabulous once it's finished. <laughs> So the Mackays, they were a battling clan. So they were among the earliest supporters of Robert the Bruce and fought on his side at the Battle of Bannockburn in 1314. And in 1370, Clan Chief I Mackay, who's the fourth of Strathnever, and his son were both murdered by Nicholas Sutherland at Dingwall Castle. This sparked retaliation, including a raid on the Sutherland town of Dornock in 1372. The Mackays set the cathedral on fire and hanged members of Clan Sutherland in the town square. So gruesome stuff. <laughs> the Mackays were involved in several clan cla clashes in the 15th to 16th centuries. So in the early 1400s, they fought at the Battle of Tutium Dar Tarbach. I think our pronunciation has been tested <laughs> against the Mackays of Lewis. Chief Angus Mackay, the sixth of Strathnaver, had married the sister of one of the Macleods, but Macleod wasn't happy with this arrangement. So the Macleods attacked Mackay land in Strathnaver, but on their return, uh, the raiders were attacked and killed by the Mackays, who caught up with them on the north bank of the River Oikel. So um, hello to Kyle joining us tonight, who is actually the president of New York Tartan Week. So it's lovely to have you joining us, Kyle. Uh, let us know if you've got any specifically Mackay stories tonight. So back to the bloody Mackay history. So in 1426, Chief Angus de Mackay, seventh of Strathnaver and his son Neil invaded Caithness at the Battle of Hartsdale and many were killed on both sides of the battle. Not long after, Angus submitted himself to the mercy of James I of Scotland, eh, giving his own son Neil as a pledge of his allegiance. So Neil was sent to live in captivity on Bass Rock in the Firth of Forth. Eh, there's a photo on screen of it there. He was aged just 14 um, and it gave him the nickname um, Bass. So a bit, bit sad for poor 14 year old Neil. However, in 1437, King James was murdered at Perth and Neil Bass Mackay was able to escape his imprisonment and he was later given governance of the clan lands. Later that year, he led the Sandside chase against the men of Caithness. So the Mackays played a significant role in the Thirty Years' War in service of the King of Denmark first and later the King of Sweden, fighting for the Protestant cause. Donald Mackay raised an army of 3,600 men and had to sell some of his land at Moidar to Narasig to fund the mission. Donald had to return to Scotland several times to recruit more men as losses were suffered on the battlefield. Later, during the Jacobite Rising of 1715, the Mackays took the side of George I to fight against the Jacobites and there's a picture of them there. They defended Inverness Castle against the Jacobites and sent 80 men to the Battle of Glen Shield where they defeated them. Again in the Jacobite Rising of 1745, the clan were anti-Jacobite. They fought at the Battle of Little Ferry in 1746, defeating the Jacobites and also captured George Mackenzie at Dunlopen Castle. So as you can see, the Mackays were involved in many battles throughout the years. Some were with other clans, especially their neighbours and enemies, the Sutherlands, mm -hmm. and others were for causes abroad that they believed in. So the ongoing feud with the Sutherlands didn't end well for the Mackays, unfortunately, and the family was actually deeply affected by the Highland clearances. Um, so they began in 1750, but they didn't affect the Mackays until 1815, uh, when they were removed from their land to make room for the sheep. Eventually, they were forced to sell their estate and hand their remaining lands to the Sutherlands in 1829. So in 1628, King Charles I created the title um, of Lord Ray, the her hereditary clan chief of Clan Mackay. 
So uh, Ray refers to the lands in Sutherland and Strathnaver belonging to the Mackays, um, often known as Ray County, uh, country, sorry. The title was created for Sir Donald Mackay, who was also a baronet of Nova Scotia. So the title uh, Lord Ray is still used by the current clan chief, um, who is the 15th Lord of Ray, actually. Oh, and I can see we also have the Commissioner for Clan Mackay in Wisconsin joining us. Um, thank you for, for joining our uh, Mackay episode tonight. Yes, you can correct anything if we're not getting things right, but yeah. <laughs> Please There's do. stories from that side of the world as well. <laughs> so, um, the ancient seat of Clan Mackay is at Castle Varick, which is near the village of Tongue in the far north of Scotland. The castle is thought to be over a thousand years old and it's thought that there are caves underneath the castle which were once inhabited by the Mackays. I don't think I really fancy living in a cave, but that's where they perhaps lived. They later moved from Castle Varick to the House of Tongue, which is held today by the Dukes of Sutherland and is sometimes open to the public. So if you're in that part of the world, that's somewhere you can visit. But maybe check first because it's not open all the time, um, but um, they certainly welcome you by appointment. So Borg Castle is another, another stronghold of the clan and that's near the hamlet of Far and there's a picture of it there, not a lot remaining. Um, they used Borg Castle as a base for carrying out raids on Clan Sutherland and there were many of those raids as we've already heard tonight. So the Mackays were due to appear in front of Mary of Guise, who is Mary Queen of Scots' mother, and as punishment, the chief of Clan Sutherland was ordered to destroy Borough Castle. Mary's, Mary of Guise hired a private ship named the Lion in August 1554 to attack the castle, and it's said that a cannon was brought up from Edinburgh. The castle was destroyed, and the captain of the castle, Rory Moore Mackay, was hanged. More gruesome stuff. A lot of... Uh gruesome punishments. Uh, hi to Luke joining us tonight as well. Thank you for, for joining us for a bit of Mackay learning. So on to the clan's motto, which is Manu Forte, which translates to with a strong hand. Um, and Emily's got the, the clan crest on the screen there, uh, which shows a hand holding a dagger aloft might be apt with all of the battles that they were involved in over the years. So the Mackay Tartans next. Um, Mackay has a deep blue with green running through it in the tartan, uh, which you can see on the, the coat behind Anna there. And it comes in three different variations. And um, so I think Anna's wearing the modern scarf. Yeah. And we also have the ancient and the weathered, which are on screen. And um, so there is also the Mackay Blue Tartan, um, which was actually designed by the Sabisky Stewart brothers in 1842. Oh, hello to Douglas as well joining us, who is looking forward to his suit. Oh, you'll need to show us some photos, Douglas, when it arrives with you. Which tartan did you get? So there is, um, during our preparation of the Clan of the Month, we actually discovered the Mackay Dutch Tartan and the Mackay Strathnaver Modern Tartan, um, which Emily's got on the screen there. I'd never seen them before, so that was quite exciting. Um, and we'll be adding these to the website in the next week, so watch this space. And I was lucky enough this month um, to speak to Charlotte Fairburn, who's the daughter of Elizabeth Mackay and first cousin of the current chief of Clan Mackay, Aeneas Mackay. Now, Charlotte's an award-winning writer and the creative mind behind many historical exhibitions, including most recently one at Lauder Castle in Cumbria. So Charlotte was telling me, and I'll just do this as a quote because this is her words, that she had so much fun doing the guide to Lauder Castle that she started casting around for other projects in the same vein. And when she asked her cousin Aeneas Ray if he thought the clan Mackay might like the same treatment, he was more than enthusiastic. So she said it's been a wonderful journey exploring Sutherland, looking through the Mackay archive and getting to know the trials and tribulations of all the clan chiefs. A fascinating story and one that very much mirrors the story of the Highlands. 
So she is hoping that everyone who reads the book will be prompted to find out more about their own history, whether they're a Mackay or not, because it's a great topic. And Charlotte very kindly sent us a copy of her book, which I have here, um, which is called The Real Mackays. And I really enjoyed this book because I, I'm not a real hardcore historian or particularly academic reader, whereas this is a very readable book. Um, and it also tells you all about all the different clan chiefs and their personalities and characteristics. And um, so you learn a lot about them as well as all their achievements over the years and how different they all were. So I have a few favourites and I'm going to read out a few little bits from the book, which um, some of my favourite bits. And one of my favourite chiefs is Donald Mackay, the first Lord Ray, um, who died in 1649. And he was the 15th chief of the clan Mackay. And I love this atmospheric description of him, um, which was actually written by Ian Grimble, who was chief of the clan Mackay in 1965. So he describes him. He's, he was of a swarthy... firm and very port-like. His doublet, black velvet, was slashed in the fashion of the day and hung with silver buttons and loops of silver and black silk. He carried his sword in an embroidered silver belt and round his neck hung the jewel of his order of Knight Baronet of Scotland by a tawny ribbon. He was the 40-year-old chief of Mackay. I think he sounds fantastic. <laughs> So Charlotte then introduces Donald in her book and she says, and so into the family limelight, up to the head of the clan strode Donald Mackay. Donald do Donald the Black, a man whose character and deeds gave birth to many myths and legends, a man who fought in the court of chivalry in London, a case of treason, a man frequently mentioned, rightly or wrongly, in association with the devil. So, of course, Monia loves historians, so do I. So, we were intrigued by the mention of the devil and delved a little bit deeper. Um, and I thought I would share the story, which Charlotte calls Lord Ray, the Devil, and the Shmoo Cave. So, I think, uh, did you say you'd been to the Shmoo Cave? Yes, I did uh, the North Coast 500 a few years ago, and that was one of our, our stopping points. It's well worth a visit. Um, you'll maybe see in the story, it's a little bit creepy, but it's uh, also beautiful <laughs> in, uh, in the right weather. <laughs> yeah, maybe not today, but the rain will mm -hmm. So the story, Lord Ray, the Devil and the Shoe Cave. It's said that the first Lord Ray met the devil on several occasions, and each time was able to get the better of him. The Prince of Darkness was none too pleased about this, and one day followed Donald Mackay to Durness and to Shmoo Cave. Lord Ray, oops, sorry, Lord Ray was heading for the cave just before dawn. Because it was dark and he could not see, he sent his dog ahead. When the animal came out, howling and hairless, Ray realised what lay in store for him. He held back for a moment, and in that moment the sun rose. In the light of the day, the devil was powerless and left through the roof of the cave, leaving the three holes seen today. So I think you saw those holes. Can you, from above, when you went? Well, yes, um, we came from the top of the cliff, and you can see the hole through the top of the cave, and then you can walk down that path that Emily's got on the screen there, and actually inside the cave. And it's um, it's actually really big, um, and it's got a beautiful waterfall as well inside. So. Definitely recommend a visit if you're way up north anytime soon. Yeah, beautiful. So one more story since we're so into our stories. So the other story um, was Lord Ray the Devil and the Fairies. So in Donald's time, the devil was said to go through the highlands teaching devilry to all who were willing to learn. Donald Mackay became the devil's star pupil. This irritated the devil so much he insisted on a fight. Donald, in return, gave his opponent a hefty beating, and the devil, begging for mercy, promised to leave the Highlands to Donald, along with a gang of fairies who would perform any task he chose. The fairies were so productive, however, that they soon proved to be a curse, and in the end, Donald had to send them out to the Pentland Firth to plat sand, a never-ending job since the sea constantly washed their efforts away. So there we go, a couple of myths for this evening. I did enjoy them. So there's lots of factual stuff in the book as well, but some nice little pieces like that too. So you can listen to the full interview um, with 
Charlotte on our YouTube channel and um, it will be up in a couple of weeks time so watch out for that because that was quite entertaining I did enjoy that and of course you can also purchase a copy of the book um, on Charlotte's own website and um, we'll probably have a few copies here and in the shop as well but um, uh, Emily will pop the link up on the screen for you there if you want to get a copy for yourself. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the stories are always my favourite part of Clan of the Month. Learning uh, learning all the weird and wonderful tales of each clan is lovely. So we've got some famous Mackays now to tell you about. Um, and first up is Australian rower Mike Mackay, who is a four-time world champion, four-time Olympic medalist and a Commonwealth Games gold medal winner. And um, so he's a very accomplished member of the clan. He was a member um, of the Orsum Foursum from 1990 to 1998, who a Coxless Four crew won, uh, who won multiple medals from 1990 to 2012. And um, he won Olympic gold at the Barcelona 92 Games and at the Atlanta 96 Summer Games. He then won silver at the 2000 Sydney Olympics and bronze at the 2004 Athens Games. Um, and just to top it all off, he was awarded the Order of Australia in 93 and then introduced into the Sport Australia Hall of Fame in 2007. Quite a man. So now this next one is one of my favourites and this is Thomas Mackay um, and of course very apt for us given that we can stand outside our Edinburgh shop and see um, Edinburgh Castle. So every day at one o'clock at one o'clock the one o'clock gun is fired from Edinburgh Castle and um, Staff Sergeant Thomas Mackay MBE was responsible for firing from 1979 until 2005 making him the longest serving holder of the post. This role meant he was also known as Tam the Gun. I like that. He was awarded the MBE by the Queen in 1999 for his services to the Territorial Army. So we shall think of him every time we hear the one got gun go off over the morning. Absolutely. So next up is Lady Elsie Mackay, who was born in around 1893 um, in Simla, India. And she was an actress under her stage name Poppy Wyndham. Um, she was also an interior decorator and a pioneering aviator. So she gained her pilot's licence um, at the de Havilland Flying School in 1923 and was one of the first women in the UK to get her Royal Aero Club's pilot's licence. Um, she purchased a Stinson Detroiter plane uh, with the intention of becoming the first woman to fly over the Atlantic Ocean. So she took off from RAF Cranwell in Lincolnshire at 8.35am on the 13th of March 1928, along with Captain Walter G.R. Hinchcliffe. Unfortunately, they both lost their lives when the plane went down at some point on their journey, although it's not actually known where or when, um, which is rather sad. Yeah, she sounded like quite a lady, it's very sad. Absolutely. So another famous lady of the Mackay clan, so Katrine Mackay, was one of New Zealand's most famous food writers, um, and best known for her social columns and her best-selling book, Practical Home Cookery, Chats and Recipes, which was published in 1929. She was the first female journalist on the Auckland Weekly News and later worked for the New Zealand Times as the lady editor. So there we have it, our <laughs> round up of the Mackays, some history, some current day people and some stories. So on to the questions. Let's see, Monia, have we had any questions? Well, first one isn't a question. It's actually um, something to add to our famous faces. So Sam in Australia actually just sent us um, a fun fact about John Mackay, who was an explorer, sailor and harbour master um, who was born in Inverness in Scotland and was best known for founding the city of Mackay in Australia, which is very interesting. Didn't know that. No. <laughs> we do have one question coming up. Um, somebody is coming to, not said what their name was, I'm coming to Scotland later this year. Where is Sutherland in Scotland and where is the Ray Estate if we want to visit? So Sutherland is in the Highlands and it faces the North Sea on the east and then the Atlantic Ocean on the north and the northwest. 
Um, you might have heard of Cape Wrath and its magnificent cliffs, um, which is um, mainland Britain's northwestern extremity. So the Ray Estate then is situated in northwest Sutherland within the estate boundaries are the well-known and instant re instantly recognisable peaks of um, Ben Stack and the southern slopes of Foynaven. I hope I'm saying that right. Maybe more than because I think if you're a keen marker, you'd maybe have been at Ben Stack. Absolutely. <laughs> so we've also had a question about how to join the Clan Society. So um, I'm sure um, that one of our um, learned listeners would maybe point you in the right direction. But anyway, Emily's going to pop um, the link on there for the Mackay um, Clan Society. So if you want to join or find out more, um, then that's the place to go. And those links are also on our website. We have a page dedicated to Clan Mackay. And on there are the links to the societies both in the UK and overseas. Um, one more question, Monia, we've got here is, which of the Mackay tartans should I wear? So which of the different ones? So the modern, ancient and weathered versions are all, and um, they're actually all versions of the same tartan. So really it's down to personal taste and which you prefer. Um, obviously they all vary in colour, so you might prefer the lighter or the darker ones. Um, I prefer the, the ancient to the modern, personally, just because it's a bit brighter. Um, but yeah, all down to personal taste, really. <laughs> I think that brings us to the end of our of our questions. So thank you very much for joining us this evening and exploring Clan Mackay. I've really enjoyed it. And uh, we do really like learning about all these different things. So if you've got anything to share afterwards, please send it on. We always collate uh, a blog full of stories um, from the roundup of the month and we'll publish that at the end of the month. So if you want to share anything with us to include in that, then please send it over. We'd really love to hear from you. And mm -hmm. um, so I think that's us for this evening. Next week, it's all about romance and it's going to be really Valentine's Day. So we're looking at Scottish flowers and traditions um, for a romantic day. So. Join us next Wednesday. Monia will be on our holidays. And <laughs> I shall be here. So we look forward to it. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you.